Okay, you can uh, unshare your screen now. There. Okay, so somebody who was joined here. Somebody just joined. Ah, I thought somebody did. Okay. So here. So now we're going to be talking about. Uh, we talked about uh, the support and resistance areas. And I guess, Kale, can you share your screen? Let me see if I can get this over here. Controls. Let me see if I can get you to share. I'll make you the co host, Kale. There we are. Uh, Giancarlo is joining. Hey, John Carlo. So the homework was optional homework is showing th resistance areas through examples of resistance, uh, strong resistance, as well as support and strong support and examples of support becoming resistance and vice versa where resistance becomes support and also showing the interim areas as well when that happens, okay? Um, let's see. Kay, are you there? Yes, coach. Oh, okay. You want to share your screen? Here? Okay. Oh. Okay. Good. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So here's good. That's good. Uh, strong at this at this particular point. If so, uh, if this if you're looking at the strong resistance, basically you wouldn't be looking where it broke here at the up at the right side. You're just gonna be including where it never broke until you broke up to the side. So this was at this point it was a strong. It was more of a strong uh, resistance area, right? Um, this one is the interim area. You see where it basically uh, broke up. It, is this pictures, right? Pictures? Yeah, Tama, yeah. PNG. Can you send me those pictures so I can fully explain? Because you'll be, so I can draw the arrows. Okay. Ilang, ilang pictures ba yon? Four. You can send it sa, ano, dun sa group chat sa, ano, sa, sa Discord. In the free online training. No, no. The free online training channel. Yeah, yeah, tama, yeah, tama. Okay, send it. Okay. It's good, there. great, great, great. Now, I can actually draw here. Good, good job. So here, so we're, can you guys see it? Oh, let me, am I sharing my screen? Hold on. <laughs> you may have to unshare your screen, Kale. I'm done. Oh, no. okay. Okay, let me share back my screen. Share, there we go. Okay, good. You guys can see that now? This is Kale's chart. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So anyways, here's what she said. Uh, again, our, she's drawing the, this is the resistance. That's right. This is uh, support, which is down here. Now it became resistance and this is strong support. Now if you want to draw this, you want to draw this maybe a little lower down here where it's going to cover this as well. So this may want to be, maybe it may show, let me see what I can do. So it may show like this, uh, may, move this down a little lower. That would be better because you have it down here. So this would be your strong support down here where price never went past that particular area. It's all you I know this is good support. As you can see, it bounces off. It's bouncing off. It's still connected. Even though it says here it overran, but it's still connected to that area. It never broke. As you can see, the, the bars never broke that area, meaning it just overran, but it's still being used as support. So it continued bouncing up, up, up and down, went back up. And so that's basically support right there. So it causes resistance area right here. 
bounced down. And then what happened here, it basically briefly stayed there and it broke. When it broke, it created this support area here. And what did it do with the support area here? It created resistance. So this area right here is what you call your interim area of both support and resistance. Because it became here, it was being used as resistance, came back down here to the support area. Like I said, this support area can be drawn a little lower down here. And then you see this, it became resistance again, bounced off, and then it finally broke. It broke and then came back down again and used it as what? Support at this point, particular point. So right here would be considered as support once it broke and then it created, it bounced off. There's a resistance area that was created on this one. And then it basically tested that, bounced off that, right? Bounced off that, came back down, created another support area here, bounced off and continued going up. As you see here, if you drew this out, it basically went through again. And then what did it do? It basically went past it and then it went back down to create another, it basically uses the resistance area as now as support. So this big, this at one point up to here was strong resistance and then it get broke. And now this area became what you call now interim area of resistance right here. And then an interim area of support, right? Because now it becomes support over here. But what you did here was actually pretty good. Like I said, this is the interim area because it broke, finally broke there, used it as resistance. And then it broke that resistance area, came back down used as a support. So this whole area here is both, is what we consider as interim area. So interim area, it's broken. It can, that interim area can be, be, be used as both support and resistance. It can be an interim area. Parejo, it can be used as both support and resistance. But when I talk about strong support, like down here, or like I said, this could be a little lower down here. It means that price never went past that area. If you had, if this did not, if you only take a picture of maybe up to, let's say up to here, right? This line here, hanggang dun lang. Yeah, uh, strong resistance na to. Pero once it broke, it now became an interim area. Clear? Yes, coach. But good, good examples there. Now here's a strong resistance area. Okay, at this point, up to this point maybe, strong resistance kasi in the past, price dito, it broke. It finally broke. So now this area became what? Uh, this area became a interim area because it broke. Once it breaks, it becomes an interim area. Like here, you see how many times there's a, your, your resistance. It broke, came back down using your support, continued going up. There was your resistance area, came down here. And basically, it just went right through. Now it's being used as a resistance and then broke and then be used as support and basically this whole area here is interim area there's your strong area support that's a good one because you see price so that's a strong area of support it though when you say strong resistance so you can change this to maybe uh interim area because the broke it got broken here it's all strong you know talaga strong because the price never passed this area so that's a good strong, that your label there is strong, support area is good. This one, strong, strong resistance, I would say it'd be more interim since it got broken here. But if you took a picture and maybe maybe just showed it up to here, right? But then not strong resistance because that picture would not show this breaking through that resistance area. Is that clear? Claro, bayon. On the questions, but good. Let me see here. This one, again, there is your strong resistance. You know, good example of strong resistance. Again, you can put this up a little higher where you can cover this, right? And so this would be your strong resistance. It never passed that. Now, here you have your interim area of resistance right there. Resistance, and then it broke, right? It came back down. As you can see, it came back down. There's your support. And then use the support here. Support, 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 support. And basically it's more support. So basically interim area of support, it never really broke here. It only broke it here, right? So then again, that's still interim area. 
This right here never broke below here. So that's basically strong support. This is strong resistance. So basically your channel, if you're looking at this, your channel will be going up and down here with your interim area here and also here. You have some support here, got broken, came back down. It's being used as a resistance here, broke. And then just basically, this is your interim area as well. Interim area of resistance. And if you extend this further out, this would be interim area of support as well. Good. Very good. Um, let me see here. We use that one. And this is your final one right here. So this is good. You didn't you didn't label this as strong resistance because why we broke it right there. So yes, that's an area of resistance. Same thing here. You have your resist your support here. It broke, became resistance. Very good. Resistance, it broke, came back down using a support. Good. Resistance area here. Uh, it hasn't broken yet. So basically, it just basically used it as a resistance, continued going up. But on its way down, it used it as a support. Very good. So this area became, it was being used as a resistance. It finally broke. And now when it broke, it came back down and used it as a support as well. So that's another interim area of support and resistance. Again, here, strong support. Very good because price did not go past this area at the screenshot that you've taken here. Right, this resistance area is right. It's correctly labeled as only resistance because it should be basically labeled as also interim area of resistance because here it got broken and then came back down to be used as support and then uh, bounced back up, went right through it like butter, like it wasn't there, and then came back up and used it as resistance right there. If you drew this out, and then continued going down. Good. So now are you guys clear about what the interim areas are? Basically interim areas of support and resistance are areas where they're broken, right? They, they get break, they, they're, they're broken areas. Um, so uh, with that, uh, that's why it's considered interim. And like I said here, if they have an area here where a classic example, what she showed here is where you have this one, where you have a support area where price did not get past if you draw this out all the way across here price never went past down this level so that's a strong area of support now if you had a strong area of resistance price will not pass that certain area and i don't think there's a here's a good example right here here if you draw this all the way across and in this particular snapshot yes that's a strong area of resistance okay and down here that's your strong area of support because if you draw this all the way across, price never went past that level. Any questions on support and resistance? Very good job, Kale. Very good. Yeah, these are the bars I'm looking for. Those are the nice bars rather than the thick bars that your mom had. <laughs> I tried to fix it. Yeah, good. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions, anyone? Highest resistance and the lowest support. These are your strong resistance and support. And then yeah. in between, so your highest resistance is your, probably your strong resistance. And your lowest support is probably your strong support. And then those in between them would be your interior. SR. Right. But, you know, as, as time goes by, these strong areas of resistance and support may eventually get broken and then become interim. Doesn't mean it's just this particular screenshot right here. It's indicating that price never went past. I can see here, if you go to the edge here, most likely it's going to test this resistance area again. That's what it looks like. Okay. I don't know if it's going to get broken, but uh, we'll, I don't know. But at this particular uh, snapshot, your strong resistance area is there on the top. Price never passed that, and your strong support area here in the below. Now, I don't know what happens when it transpires after this when you scroll to the right. What happens? It can be broken or it can, you know, just continue with this channel. But at this particular time, at this particular snapshot, yes, this is your strong support and your strong resistance. It's going to test it. For example, here, 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 let me see if I can show you a chart. This mine. Oh, let me see. Oh, yeah.
factors. So I'm looking at my chart here. Like for example, at this particular instance right here, where is your strong, there's an area of strong resistance, right? Tama. Your strong area of resistance, if we're just looking at this chart right now, would be right here. Oops. Would be right here. Right. That's where it'd be. Where's my strong area of support? I'm just looking at this. I'm just taking the snapshot right there. Where's my strong area of, of support? It would also be down here. Where's my rectangle? Right there. You see, price never went past. If I, I also just extend this out. There's your, there's your basically your channel. It's just going up and down here. Now your interim areas are right here. Just copy this. Um, there. Why is this? Okay, there. So you can see this right there, um, right here, it used as resistance, right? It came back down, went through, came back, came back down, now support, finally broke through, used as support, support, look how many times it tested that support area. Support, 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 then really disconnect from there. So that's still support, it finally broke, and then what did it use? It became resistance. It became resistance. That's why. See, actually, this is a very strong support area until it got broken and became an interim area of both support and resistance. And you have some, several other areas here as well. You can see where it bounces off, right? Is that clear, Joseph? Yes. Is there a fundamental cause for... Uh, for it to break uh, SR. Uh, say, fundamental, fundamental cost. Uh, fundam fundamental um, cost or indi indicator. Uh, say uh, the there's like a economic news that will cause um, the value to uh, break through a support the resistance or not really. That's you're talking more on because when we when we day trade and usually this during this time that most of the economic news releases are done around before the market open around 8.30 Eastern. Market opens at 9.30 Eastern. Ah, okay. So this is basically your typical moves that's going up and down. There's really no price level that, oh, bond stock, maybe this, there's an area of support here that's been there since ever since when? Maybe when you look back all the way back across. So let's say you take this all the way across, right? No, a lot. Because this we're hitting record highs right now, so this is like uncharted territory. So basically, whatever these prices are. In fact, if you look at this and on a bear on a on a naked chart, you'll see there's like there's really nothing going on here. So now, if I'm looking at here, fifteen nineteen, right, fifteen thirty seven. If I look at a chart with some uh, indicators, so again, we're looking at this around fifteen thirty seven, right? So this is during close to the what is this? So here, fifteen thirty-seven. Yeah, I think this is it right here. Yeah, there's really no levels there, unless I have another chart here. Let me see here, with my VWAP. Yeah, right here. So. I'm looking at 1537C because you'll see some why it bounces off. It's usually on a deviation level where it would bounce off. But if you look at a naked chart, you wouldn't see that unless you have these indicators. Okay. And usually when they bounce off, it's usually on a deviation level of the VWAP. 
again, these indicators are more advanced. Um, any questions? Did that answer your question? Or not, Joseph? Okay. Uh, no further questions. Okay. So here's a Keltner channel. We're going to talk about the Keltner channel. This is a very easy one. Keltner channel is basically the band you see here. Um, if I look at this, let me extend this. It's basically this one. Uh, you'll see the bands. You have the outer band, the low, uh, the upper lower, or upper, uh, upper outer band, and the lower outer band, and you have the mid band. Those are the that that's what composes the Keltner channel. The mid band is usually an EMA fifty two. That's what we use. Okay, it's an EMA fifty two. That's the kind of Keltner channel we use. So here. What are the uh, what are the channel bands? What, the channel bands are the most important indicators that we use because they allow us to frame the price. You can see here when we say frame the price, price is usually trading within the within the outer band. The outer bands ninety, I would say ninety eight percent of the time. Once it gets outside here, you can see it's still disconnected. That means that's basically what. It's over at this particular point, it's like oversold. And when you get to this area where it's outside or even here, you see this really outside, what's gonna happen? The tendency, it's almost like a rubber band. It's gonna go back to the mid band. Same thing here. You see this, what happened? It goes back to the mid band. And in some instances, if, if this, if this uh, momentum is not as strong to the downtrend, you can see it's a downtrend, right? If it's not as strong, it's gonna continue going to the other side of the outer band. From the lower, outer band to the upper outer band. But in this particular instance, you can see there's strong momentum to the downside. What happens? We goes back to the mid band and then tries to go back down here again. There's a strong momentum to the downside. What happens when it hits out the outside band here? It goes back to the mid band. It's almost like a rubber band. Okay, so that's how we channel, that's how we frame the price. The channel bands allow us to stay in a proper frame of mind. Have you, driven, have you ever driven on a road with no lines or directions? So maybe you haven't had the pleasure of driving in the Philippines. It's chaos, very chaotic. Walang, walang linya dito, mga kamote drivers will be all over the place. And that's what they do now. Even though it says one way, wala, walang one way, walang one way, one way dito sa Pilipinas, di ba? Very chaotic. So we frame price. That's one of the three. That's what we use the outer band. So we frames price, gives us an idea of where market is and where it's going. For example, like I said, I showed here where it's going. You see, it's angling down, meaning we have a downtrend, right? It's angling down. It also it provides us a tar target area. So in more advanced setups, we use the outer edge as profit targets. For example, our entry would be here. Let's say right here, and where would be our profit target? Most instances, we'll be using our outside outer band and what happened here. So we got to enter here. Let's say that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, let's say that's six points, right? That's with one contract, that trade would have been $300 on just one contract. Okay, name pay day. So again, what we use for the mid band is where that's where we enter our trades, the mid band. Let's see here, mid band is an entry area for all trades. And this is basically what we're talking about, the basic strategy. We enter all our trades in the mid band. The bands allow us to get an idea of where the market will be headed and to have an additional target area where we can take, uh, take profit. So the channel bands are very dynamic. We also use the channel bands as a way to measure how strong the volatility is during a particular time. Uh, meaning, how do we do that? Basically, we take the measurement with a ruler of how big, how wide this, uh, this spread is from the outer band, upper outer band to the lower outer band, whatever that value is in points, that's gonna determine how volatile our market is. That's why it's very, it's optimized to the, volatility of the market. So again, when there's low volume and, and movement, there will be a four to five point uh, value between the upper outer band and the lower outer band. So if you take a measurement, like for example, like here, take my measurement with my 
Uh, where's a good one right here, right? So let's say one want to take what's the volatility, how strong is the volatility of this particular time right here, all the way here, right? And it gives you 9.5. That's actually pretty good. That's between average to maybe high, but right, I would say that's a very good volatility. Average is between, I'd say, uh, between anywhere from seven to nine, okay? Or, or yeah, around nine. I would consider a high volatility between anywhere above, above 12. I would not, um, I would not have beginners trade anything above 12 because most likely you, you get stopped out because of the volatility and you'll be risking more. You would need, you would require a wider stop, meaning uh, wider stop in terms of more risk involved. So if we're going to train an ideal market, it would be anywhere where the volatility, like you can see here in this indicator, once you get become a full-time student, you get this, it basically measures it right away. And this is basically what it says here, 7.16. That's your band spread. That's a very good, that's normal. Okay. That's a good band spread. That's a good volatility. Um, so that's how we use the Keltner channel. It also tells us, like I said, it says here, uh, when we get high volume or high volatility and the market is really moving, we can have roughly more than 10 points between the upper outer band and the lower outer band. So really, the it really tells us how volatile the market is. So here are um, some assignments. Again, Kayla, most likely this is going to be easy for you. There are three examples of mid-band acting as support and resistance. Remember, we're talking about support and resistance before. So how can you apply it to the mid bands and the outer bands and the and so forth on the Keltner channel? For example, right here, where it's being used here, this is being used as what? Kale, maybe you may want to answer this. Right here, the outer band is being used here as what? Support or resistance. Support. Right. Support. So anytime we have a we have a disconnect right here where it's disconnected. It basically resets. So now right here, what's the outer band being used as? Support or resistance. Right here. Resistance. Right here. On the side, Still support. Resistance. Maybe resistance. Yeah, so this would be you. Yeah, this would be used as resistance. When it breaks, disconnects, and comes back up, that's now being used as resistance. Here, it's being used as support. Still support, still support. It breaks below, disconnects from the outer uh, lower outer band, comes back up, and now it's being used as resistance. In the mid band here, this is right here being used as what? That's being used as resistance, even though this is what we call an overrun. We have an overrun here, even though... It's, it shows there that uh, it overruns, but it's still connected to the, to the uh, mid band. It never disconnects. Yeah, it gets connected and disconnects here, but still being used here as what? Resistance. It broke through, disconnects. Now it's being used here as what? The mid band here is being used as support. Whereas here in the outer band, this is being used as what? Resistance. Here it's being used as support. Support, even though that's what we consider as an overrun of the mid band, it's still being used as support. Because it's still connected. You see the price bars is still connected to the, to the mid band. It's just an overrun. So it's still being used as what? Support. Until we see a disconnect here. Now this becomes as what? Resistance. The mid band becomes resistance, resistance, resistance. And Again, we have an overrun here, did not get disconnected here. So it's still being used as resistance. We finally get a disconnect here. It comes back down here and being used as support. Need this outer band, this is being used as resistance. Is that clear? Um, let me see, for example, right here. You see this, this is being used as what? The outer band here is being used as support. Got broken up, still being used as support, broke down. Uh, we never get close to there, but now in terms of the mid band, we see this right here. At this point, it being support, not much of a support. It gets broken, disconnected from the mid band, right? It never really, there's really no hesitation there. So basically just went right through, 
broke again, disconnected from the midband. Now it's here. It's basically using the midband as what? Support, right? And then came back, broke off again, never used, uh, went right through like it wasn't there. Came back down, came back down, uh, really not using this as support resistance, but basically just going right through it until you get to maybe right here. Where you have a resistance, gets broken, went right through again. There's a bit, there, it's resistance. Uh, went right through again. There is a resistance. And then we get broken off there. You can see it disconnects. Now it's being used as what? Support. Here it gets disconnected. You see that disconnect? Now this is being used as what? Resistance. The outer bands here are being used as what? Support, support, and so forth. Is that clear? Any questions on that? Regarding the Keltner channel. So if I'm looking at the Keltner channel, like for example here, and we're looking at this, and let's say we're using this outer band right here, this one would be considered as, at this particular point right here, that's being used as resistance, it broke. It never came and really settled here. It just basically went down and broke again. It's being used as what, resistance here. Now the bin bands here, uh, basically uh, right here is being used support, broke. That's being used as resistance, broke back up, and basically it went right through. Now it broke again here. So now it's, this is an overrun, it's still connected. So this is still considered now as resistance. It broke right here. You can see it disconnects. It continued. Now these are overruns and still connected. You see this still connected to the mid band. So this is basically still being used as support. Walapang disconnection ng sa mid band. Dito. It got disconnected there, and now it's being used as what? Resistance. Same thing here with the outer bands, right? These are being used as resistance, got broken off, and now we overran. We're still connected. You see that? So now it's being used as what? The support. These are just strong overruns. It got disconnected here, and then now it's being used as resistance. Any questions? Uh, no questions, any, is that clear or not? Are you guys falling asleep, boring? <laughs> no questions. None? None. Okay. On you. Okay, so that, that's clear. So that's how we use the Keltner channels, basically framing, framing price. As you can see here, you see price is usually within the, within the outer and uh, upper outer band and the lower outer band. That's basically 98% of the time, that's where the price is gonna be. Now, if you see where if it's strong, like for example, strong momentum to the outside, you might have it where it's really in the outside. And at this particular time, really, I, I don't see anything here, except maybe we have a strong run here. It's still outside, but it never really disconnects. There's some disconnection here, but not that much. But if I look at this, yeah, there's some disconnect right there, right? Right here. But that's strong, that's a strong run. Then it just came back and then it finally reversed. Remember I was telling you guys, when we're outside here, what's gonna happen? It's almost like a rubber band. It's gonna eventually get back and now we see the momentum changing here. And what happened? Momentum is now changing up. We went from the outside, the lower outside, and now we're down the upper out, outer band. Went from the lower outer band to the upper outer band. But it had to go through the mid band. Whenever we see this, so it's basically we call this overbought. When it's an overbought condition, most likely it's going to at least get back to the mid band. And then and what did it do? We went from the outer band, upper outer band, and now went to the lower outer band. So it's almost like a rubber band. See how that that's how the market reacts. When we're out here, that's almost like that's almost like overbought. What's gonna happen? It's gonna come back to the mid-band. And then what does it do? It goes eventually gets to the other side, the lower outer band, because it reached here from the upper outer band. So basically it went right right across.
Any questions? That's how we use the Keltner channel and how we use it in our in our strategy. Basically, we use it as profit targets or you know where we, we can place our profit target as well as how we can determine a more advanced meaning this is over sold we're going to be looking for an area where we can buy and we can usually buy around here and profit target will be somewhere out here um are breakthroughs possible entry points when they break through the outer band entry or points no no because you're over basically you're oversold you do it's almost like catching a falling knife if it's oversold can you do a long no Again, it's almost like catching a falling knife. You don't know when. For example, uh -huh. you say here, you don't know where you're gonna get a buy here. It's strong momentum. This is like strong momentum to the downside. Why would you want to buy? It's like I said, it's almost like try catching a falling knife. Mahira, you're gonna get cut. So I say this is this is strong momentum, really, to the downside. If you try to get a buy position here, what's gonna happen? You just get burned. Again, how we measure, when do we measure when the, when the momentum of one direction is weakening? That's another, that's more in deep, more into the class. That's more of another uh, indicator that we use that to determine the strength of the momentum. Right now, in this uh, free session, we'll just be covering basically the Keltner and also the MACD, which is down here. So on Friday, we'll just discuss about the MACD. So in this assignment, uh, those of you who want to do it, it's basically, you know, I guess, Kale probably doing it. I think this would be a lot easier. It's basically uh, showing, um, <clears throat> like I just discussed three examples of um, the mid-band acting as support or and or resistance, uh, where it's being used as support and then becomes being used as resistance. Three examples of an overrun, When I meant by overrun, still acting as support, remember it overruns, but still connected to the mid-band, right? It's not disconnected from the mid-band. If it's still connected, it's an overrun. Uh, remember, I, I, I discussed that, right? It's overrun. So make sure to mark when the mid-band gets broken. That's where you mark it. It's broken, so basically, basically it gets na, na reset. So once it resets, it can be now become, it was being used to support and it broke the mid band now it's being used as resistance that can also be applied to outer bands as well <clears throat> but this one just showing just show me examples of how the outer band either the upper or the lower can be used as support and where it's being used as resistance any questions Ah, by the way, so you need to uh, how does how to basically configure your Keltner channel because some of you had just have this blank thing. So what you want to do is this: you want to right click indicators, and then you'll find here a list here, right? Here, Keltner channel, right? Click on that. Now, what you want to do here is now this one you're going to adjust to 3.5. Period would be, uh, let me see here, 52, I think. Delete. And you have the midline is the middle. That'd be the white. I'll keep this not dark gray, but white, everything white. And then this one would be two. And you can go to this recording and view this again. So how you can configure the Keltner channel. And the lower is also white. Okay, white also. And then the, what we want to do here, the width is basically two, two, and two. And that's what it's going to look like. Or I'm gonna share the, this is what I can do. 
Let me delete this. Indicator, partner channel, delete. I can share this indicator. It's called Cheltner. It's called Bandas, yeah, Spanish. And it's already configured here. There's the 52 period, 3.5 distance. You can just take out the label and then oops, go back to this. Not showing here, uh, upper, lower, solid. I wonder why it's not showing this. Uh, it just shows the mid band, which is weird. Okay, so I guess that's not working. That is weird. That's the first time I've seen that. Solid line. White dash upper. This should be shown as well. Plot. Yeah. There. Ah, I can see why. On bar close, that's what it is. So again, indicators, I'll give you this indicator. Um, it's called Bandas and how to install it is basically, you can either do one or two things. See, I did that same thing right there or you can use the Kelpner channel, which is basically right here. Same thing, except you just had to change this to 3.5 and then this becomes 52 be the same thing. So if I did that, you'll see. It's kind of different. Wow, weird. It's kind of delayed. So okay, we'll just use the bandas. So when you install the bandas, I'm gonna send it to you and you basically what you're gonna do with it is basically uh download it and then you want to go to documents right ninja trader eight again this i'm recording this so you'll go back to this oops ninja trader eight you would go to bin custom indicators then you, what you would do is take that what you download it and move it just to here, anywhere, just the indicators. It's gonna go there, right? And then what you wanna do then, when you go to your control center right here, go to new uh, Ninja Script Editor, click on that. And you'll get this list. Right there, indicators, and you'll get this list and you'll find out where Bandas is located. You'll see it right there. Click on Bandas, you'll get this, and then you want to compile. When you hit this, it looks like a keyboard, right? You hit this, it's going to compile, and you'll hear a tone. There, you heard that tone. That means it's completely compiled. And once you have that, once you see the compilation, you will see then you'll be able to get the, the two, you'll be able to see the indicator. For example, right here, you will hear indicators and you'll see it. 
which is going to be bandas right there. Okay. So let me get this out. This is not that accurate. So there, I don't they have the bandas there. 52, it's already been configured when you download it. Everything's there. Make sure it's on bar close, okay? On bar close, and you'll see uh, that. Okay. Any questions? None? Coach, so we're going to use Bandas instead of Feltner. What's that? We're going to use Bandas instead of Feltner. Uh, yeah, use the Bandas. I think you have do you have that in your chart? Not yet. Uh, I, mean, need... I use the Bollinger. Bollinger. Uh, Bollinger and Keltner are different. It plots differently. Oh, I, I changed it. I'll change it. Yeah, I think your mom might have the bandas. I can send it to you. Now. In fact, I'm going to send it to the group right now. Here, let me see this. Hold on. Um, right there. So I'm going to send it here. And uh, bandas. I don't have bandas, but I have Kelt. Yeah, that's why you can download it here. I'm, I'm sharing it with you right now to the group. So right there. Just download it to your desktop, and I told you how to move it. It's, uh, you can go back to this, this uh, recording, right? Just download it right here. It's going to download to your desktop or wherever it wants to download. And then once it downloads, you'll just have to just move it. Usually when you go to your thing here, you'll see downloads and you'll see it there, right? And then just create another, move this, create another one there. And just move that, whatever it is, down to, again, I said bin, custom, indicators, and just move that, whatever you downloaded, to this one here. And I told you how to compile it and so forth. Just go back in the directions. If you, if you have any issues with that, just let me know. Just type into, uh, just let me know in the, in the chat. Okay. Clear? Okay, so I guess uh, I am going to let you guys go. I have another coaching session. Thank you, John Carl. So I'll talk to you guys uh, Friday, our last class, and we'll talk about the MACD. Okay. Thank you, Rowan. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Julius. Okay. So I will see you then. Enjoy your evening. And if you have any questions, again, type it in the, in the, in the Discord chat. Okay. Thank you, Don. See you guys on Friday. Bye-bye.